，我是于心怡，呃 ，Cindy 有，现在是 PC Club 从二零零五年到二零零七年之间的嗯会长，啊、呃，站在我旁边呢是 James 高高金波，他是我们的 Club 的 Founder 和。嗯、um, ，PC Club 零三年到零五年的会长，我们大今天大家都很高兴在这里，因为这是我们第四届嗯、um, 年会，嗯、um, 前面几届都非常成功，所以我们希望今天的年会也给大家带来很多的收益，啊、um, ，就像给我们带来很多的收益一样，嗯、um, ，下面呢，哦、oh, ，我请高会长给大家介绍一下，谢谢。好，谢谢啊，呃，大家好啊、呃，我叫 James 高，是中文名字叫高静波，呃，我是这个俱乐部的发起人之一，呃，我们几个人呢一起啊、呃，在二零零三年九月份共同发起这个俱乐部，这个叫父母子女教育俱乐部啊、呃，为什么叫父母子女呢？因为那个教育子女呢，要先先从父母开始，然后呢才能够呃带动孩子，呃，父母的榜样是。呃，比这个任何一事情都会加深这个子女的教育。所以说呢，那我们这个俱乐部的迷生呢，就是说，嗯，是为了情商教育，呃，发展小孩的领导能力，呃，组织能力，呃，和社交能力。这样的话呢，把我们的华人的孩子呢，能够带到一个更高的一个呃阶段。呃，我们都知道，我们华人的孩子呢，在这里头，尤其男孩子比较呃比较 s h 不不会爱说话，不是像美国人这样。那我们希望我们的华人孩子能够在呃美国的社会啊、呃、有一定的贡献，然后呢，从小开始。所以说，我们父母子女教育俱乐部呢，就形成了一个平台，给我们这些呃华人呢提供一个交流的平台。我们从开始的几个家庭开始，到现在有五百多个家庭，呃，逐逐渐的壮大。这次是我们我们每年一次呃呃 conference 呃讨论不同的主题，关于子女教育方面的呃，同时呢，我们每个月呃也请来不同的呃专家给我们介绍一下这个过来的经验。这样的话呢，我们会会少走弯路，走走更成功的路，呃，给我们那个呃孩子一个很很好的一个前途。这就是我们的目的。那我也希望呢，大家能加入我们这个俱乐部。俱乐部的话呢，我们网上有一个呃，叫做雅虎 Group， 呃，你可以注册到那里。同时，你可以访问我们那个俱乐部的网站，叫 www. dot p c e， 呃 ，club. dot org。p 是 parent， c 是 children， 呃 ，e 是 education。p c e club. dot org。我们雅虎的那个 Group， 你可以在网上看到。呃，谢谢大家，希望呃，大家还有一个美好的明天。谢谢。嗯，像呃高金波高先生刚才说的是的，呃，这个、俱乐部，嗯，已经举办了很多的活动，然后呢，我们的，嗯，我们给很多的家长带来了，嗯，呃，很多的收益。现在呢，我们有新会长张颖婷女士，她呢给大家介绍一下，嗯，我们就是明年有什么计划？谢谢。谢谢 Cindy 啊，谢谢 James 啊，那这两位前任给我压力很大，因为他们实在把目标都那个 standard set 得很 high， 我一定要啊 match up with 这样的 high expectations 哈。啊，我参加 club 也有一段时间，学到了很多。club 这么多年来，从婴儿期到少儿期，现在基本上在 preschool 阶段吧，啊，取得了那么大的成就，有这么多的 volunteer。在那里参与是主要的原因，嗯，在接下来的一年呢，我希望把这个 club 继续发扬光大。我们已经有大概的十二次活动，基本上都已经定下来了。啊、呃，我们从 leadership development 啊、呃、，EQ development 开始，在着重从 early children 到 middle childhood 再到 teenage， 怎么去了解他们的内心思想？怎么去挖掘他们心里真正所想的？他们的 dream 是什么？我们怎么去 avoid 我们的文化之间的冲突、代沟之间的冲突，达到真正的理解跟了解，而不是表面上的。孩子聪明的很，家长如果是真的要想了解或者去理解他们，从表面他们就看得出来。所以我们希望在这一年里边呢，啊、呃，我们能达到更高一层的。啊、uh, ，level， 啊、uh, ，然后对社区也有更多的贡献，谢谢。
呃，我这时介绍一下那个多维时报，我们呃跟俱乐部已经第三次合作，呃，每年的 conference 他们出了很多例，呃，这是新呃牛新牛新力是新泽西多维时报的呃总经理，所以请他讲一讲这几年的对俱乐部的印象。大家好，我是我叫 Linda， 中文名字是牛新力，我是多维时报新泽西分社的总经理。那我们和 PCE 啊、呃，就是父母子女教育。俱乐部合办这个年会呢，已经是第三次。在这三年中间呢，其实大家都是，特别是我们多维时报一直在摸索，一直在探索怎么样一个合作的更好的方式，然后能够让新泽西社区的华人家长呢，更多的 involve 到这个活动中间来。可以说呢，每一年我们都在进步，每一年呢也获取更多的知识和经验。那今年呢是我们第三次，第三次活动每年的主题都不一样。啊、呃，然后今年呢，我们还同时进行了征文活动。征文活动呢，是对应那个 Virginia Tech 的那个枪击案。然后，呃，这个征文活动发出去以后呢，由于是在这个暑期，响应的人不是特别多。但是呢，以后我们想，可能这种好多活动的方式呢，会随着这个新移民结构的不断的调整，我们的内容也会有很多新的改进。和新的方法、啊，那个多维时报呢，在新泽西已经有五年了。啊、呃，我们也是一个逐步成长的过程。我们属于多维媒体公司，多维媒体公司呢，它下下边有多维时报、金周刊、多维新闻网、呃，多维月刊，现在还有多维电视。啊、呃，员工呢，我们现在多维时呃，员工呢有一百多人。呃，多维时报发行在全美十个州。啊、呃，而且呢，我们现在呢，就说这个发展呢是越来越壮大，越来越蓬勃。同时，我们也在此呢，感谢社区各界。呃，人事的大力支持，这几年多维的发展离不开社区的支持。另外呢，也感谢呃所有在座的家长对我们 PCE Club 每一次年会和每一个月活动的支持。希望大家更多的支持我们，谢谢。嗯，站在我旁边的是 Dennis 吴，呃，他是我们从呃创始以来的 Treasure， 已经嗯、呃、给 Club 贡献了嗯。呃五年，差不多快五年的时间了吧。他给大家介绍一下我们，嗯，这个、club 就是成立之后受到的各方面的支持。谢谢啊。呃，谢谢 Cindy。那个，我我是 Dennis 吴吴建华，呃，我是 Treasure。呃，这五年来就说，承蒙各各地的支持，还有就说，尤其是 City Bank 啊，还有其他几个呃 local 的这个 company 跟 merchant， 大家都很极力支持我们的活动。然后，呃，我们的经费呢，基本上是，呃，经过这个 donation， 还有另外就是收集一些 membership fee 来维持，所以希望以后呢，还是继续能得到大家的呃赞助，谢谢。现在呢，我想介绍一下王一平教授，他是我们第四届年会的主讲人。王教授呢，从前就读于南京师范大学，后来来美国之后就读于 Pacific Oaks College in California 和普渡大学，获得了儿童教育方面的学士、硕士和博士。呃，他有多年啊、呃、教育和研究的经验。现在他就职于罗罗格斯大学和 Robert Wood Johnson 医学研究所。现在呢，我想请王教授介绍一下他的感受。谢谢。谢谢。今天很高兴在这边哈，我来美国已经二十多年了，从呃西部到中部，现在到 New Jersey， 这还是我第一次看到这样一个 Parent Education Club， 啊、呃，而且这个 club 对这个 parenting， 嗯、呃。In United States, this topic is very important. I think it's very impressive. For myself, when I was thinking about education, I felt like I had found a home, a place to support our parents. So I would like to thank you all for your support. Thank you. 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 Thank 啊，来讲是一个非常好的一个环境来 support 我们 parenting， 所以我今天很高兴来这边啊、呃，成为这个啊、呃、community 的一个成员，谢谢。
parents and the children education club, the PCE club. We do appreciate your time and efforts to involve our activities. Uh, I think most of our attendants are already members of PCE. So I will just give you a very brief introduction of today's agenda. Many speaking, we will have three sessions in this whole afternoon. The first session is the keynote speech by Professor Yi Ping Wang, and the topic is Leveraging the Strength of Diversity, the Cultural Adaptation and the Mental Growth of Immigrant Children. And the second session will be held by our teenagers. It is called Fishbowl Forum. And the last session is the panel discussion. We actually invite different panelists from different areas to share their knowledge and experience in this topic. And I believe that most of you will enjoy today's conference. So let me first introduce the president of PCE Club, in, uh, Cindy Yu, to give us an open remark. Welcome, Cindy. Thanks, Jenny. Um, I apologize, so we have a few minutes delay. Um, I appreciate you guys so come this afternoon. Um, before we start the conference, I'd like to introduce the mission of the PCE. I feel you know everything we do, especially this conference, is around what PCE is about and what PCE is trying to serve. To me, PCE Club. It's like a big house, right? This is the original sample by the founders of the club who have designed to show the commitment the club will have to, to serve our parents, our kids, and our community, and to provide a discussion forum for parents on topics of child education, fostering self-confidence, <laughs> traits of leadership and broadening the horizon of vision. It's to provide a stage for our children to show their talents, to express their views and learn to present themselves. This really uh, showed in our monthly event. I don't know how many of you have gone there before. Our first part of monthly event always going to be the children's talent show, and this is exactly what the PCE Club is trying to do. Third, the house of the PC Club is also to try to create and maintain an environment that fostering each member's personal growth. This is what's focusing on the parents. That's always the second part of the monthly event. The parents will exchange experience and lessons learned in their parenting experience in our monthly event. We also have experts like what we do today in our monthly event too to talk about various aspects of uh, the development needs of the parents. This is what showed in the fourth mission of the club. It's to explore each member's potential by exposure to different fields of interest. We talk about sports, music instruments, talk about history, astrology, geography, all the things that we feel as a parents we need to develop to match up the growth of the children. And this is what PC is trying to provide. We also encourage and influence our kids with positive peer pressure. Everything in PC is about positive environment and positive reinforcement. So um, that's one of the reasons we haven't put our talent show as a competition. Instead, we make it as an encouraging environment for the children to have the opportunity to show, to develop. Um, least but not um, last but not least, is to promote the growth of the EQ instead of just the IQ. As the providers of the house, which is our volunteer officers, um, this is a list of them. I don't think all of them are here, but uh, for those of you who are here, can you please stand up so people know who they can go to when they have questions about the club. Um, James, start with you. Can you stand up and help? In team. And Jenny, please. Um, please stand up and thank you. Uh, who else is here? Maggie is outside still working. Um, all of us 
here are volunteers, just like PCE, we're non-profit, non-religious, volunteer organization. Um, we are parents ourselves, and we understand what parents need. So with that, here's some accomplishments I list here just during the year of 2005 and 2007. Uh, even though the club has started from mid-year of 2003, so it's our fifth year. Um, just during the period of 2005 2007, um, the club has organized 24 events, including the two prior annual conference. We have grew the on online forum message with a 10 times more volume. Um, and we have also formalized the house. That means we are an official nonprofit organization. Any donation we receive will be officially tax deductible. We have also established a functional website where we can use for registration for information. And also we gain supports uh, because the efforts of everybody that I just uh, mentioned earlier, we gain supports from the community, from the parents, and from the media. So if, you, if some of you have not joined the club, I'd like to invite you to join the house and enjoy the appreciation and the rewarding experience. And you receive this membership appreciation card. And what's exciting, more, uh, exciting me more is that we have, we're going to have a brand new leadership team and the leadership of Ying Ting Zhang. And I'm very excited um, to have her to continue the legacy of the club. Without further ado, um, I want to introduce so uh, Miss Linda Niu, and she's our partner of the conference, and she's going to give a brief introduction of what her experience was the conference. Thank you. Uh, Chi 家长能够来到这个地方 Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Cindy. A very impressive introduction. Um, probably most of us are also like me, are very interested in knowing what is going to happen to our club in future two years. So let me introduce the president of PCE, Ying Ting Zhang, to give us a brief introduction. Welcome, Ying Ting. Thank you, Jenny. I promise I will be very short. I know we are here to listen to the speakers, not just us. Um, the club thinks its conception, its establishment in, nine, um, I think, in 2003. It has gone through four years from its infancy, developed from infancy, toddlership, and now we are in the stage of preschool, um, heading towards a very promising future. I hope in the coming year, we are accomplished more um, things that uh, you will be interested in. Um, I'm going to introduce our the 12, um, upcoming 12 monthly events in the coming year. Um, in the next coming months, it will be uh, leadership development by Cecilia. Maybe in Chinese, you know better, Xie Lan. And then we'll talk about um, children's mental health. Some people are not as fortunate as we are. They have children that with lots of challenges facing them. And we want to address that part too. Um, that will be broken or beautiful to advocate for those children in school. And then we we'll also talk about, we also always have an end year party. The party is not just for fun and then uh, recreation. 
we summarized the whole year's accomplishments and looking ahead for the future. And then we all do a series of small lectures from early children to middle childhood to teenagers so that we try to understand these groups of children better, to, to help them better, to understand, understand them better, so that they all communicate with us, the parents, in a real sense, instead of kind of phony way. They can tell that you are not being truthful. When you say, mommy don't compare, mommy said that we don't compare with other people, we compare only with ourselves. On the other hand, they say, who and who's already done that? How about you? So we are doing very conflicting things in daily life without even realizing it. And then we all do um, the next thing, like uh, we all send our kids to Chinese school. We didn't realize what the real purpose, what kind of goals, expected um, objectives you want to reach. How are your children doing in the Chinese school? Do you really understand the real situation there? So uh, Rebecca Huang will address how to raise a successful bilingual children or even triple lingual children. Um, then we also have children who are so autistic. Um, do you really encourage your kids to pursue their degree in those areas, even though they are very talented, and you send them to uh, extracurriculum activities when they really want to uh, pursue that kind of dreams? Do you encourage them wholeheartedly? We doubt. Um, we also have outdoors, those outings helping us to understand each other better. And then also we have the fifth annual conference, always in September, and the theme hasn't been decided yet. Um, so that's, and we have officers, um, by the way, the, the club has been to this far. It wouldn't be that successful without the efforts, time, volunteering of so many officers, so many people in the club and many of them continue their volunteering in the next coming year. And just name a few. Our um, Vice President, Dennis Vu, who he has been a treasurer for all the years. And James, one of the founders, and the past chair of the board, he'll continue on the board. And all these people, and Cindy, of course, will move down to be the chair of the board. And uh, so many others, uh, because of the limit of time. I'm not going to mention every one of them. And everyone here are welcome to join this team. It's a very rewarding learning experience for me and I'm sure for you too. I'm sorry, I said I for short. I still have, cannot help it. You know, women are very talkative. So, so that's all. Should we just keep talking? Yeah, we忙于在每天上呢回中国啊所以呢参加的人并不是很多我们收到的征文呢这个艾比很有限那在这个地方呢我特别感谢参加了我们这次征文活动的人那特别值得提出来的呢是我们那个温迪旺就是刚才大家有
，他主要是讲小孩就是叫精通精通一见世面，就是说你的这个健康的心理呢，就是说有很大程度上是和你的这个精通一见世面有关系。也就是说，父母讲和这个学校的这种经历可能不能取代，就是说我自己我自己个人的经历。也就是说，我以以前小时候很怕黑呀、啊。但是有一次被迫一个人在家里，八九岁一个人在家里搞了两个星期，啊，然后周围都没有人，这这样的话以后一下胆子就大很多了，因为那时候一听到人声，马上就不一样。所以这个有时候我们吃点苦头，我们还是有好处的。这里我所讲的就是，我有一个问题，我大家都这么说啊，但是我有一个什么想法，我就觉得人和人不一样。那有比方说以前我们医疗条件不好啊。好多小孩都生出来，但是好多小孩还死了呢。那你说，我怎么知道我的小孩有那胆量坚持？对对对，这就是这就是我讲的。我回头一看，觉得这个东西大家都脱了也不行。就是说，<笑>呃，比方这个小小孩，你当然是要鼓励了，对吧？你不能把小小孩，这个我当然是被迫的。但是现在你八九岁放在放在家里，你就是 illegal 了。所以，呃，就说这个越想这个谬误越多，真的。呃，但是呢，当时也就是这么想的，就是说，我觉得大家的讨论很好。这个父母和子女要有个沟通，矛盾是肯定的。就是说，我们要我们要求的是怎么去沟通，我们不能求回避矛盾。啊，我总想一个 perfect 的 relationship， 我们就是呃 no pain 啊 no 矛盾的这种这种成长过程，这个过程可能是很难很难有的。所以只是说，你把这些矛盾、这些经历能够转化为一个 positive result， 这就是我们需要的。好，谢谢。好的，现在呢，我们请那个森地狱 Cindy 来给我们的小作者 Wendy 颁奖。Wendy 在吗？尹婷，来，你就拜吧。啊，拜了，来给给给我们那个 Wendy 旺颁奖。Wendy, congratulations! Thank you for participating、um, in this contest. Do you have anything to say? Thank you very much. Let's <laughs> <laughs> ask the question. If your daddy was not here in the audience today, would you be able to say a lot more? <laughs>
the majorities to listen to the voices of the minorities. So in here, these children, among all these parents, they are the minorities. We don't want their voice to be swallowed or, you know, or challenged. We want them to feel comfortable, you know, when you need eye contact, you can have eye contact with me. You don't have to have eye contact with, with parents or with your audience. So that's the idea. So for parents, if you want to have a question, uh, you can take this seat. We always have a uh, empty seat. This is the standard practice. So feel free to come and don't sit here forever. And then once you get your questions answered or uh, you know, at appropriate time, maybe I will signal you, you, know, you can return to the bigger circle, uh, outer circle we call it. So the inner circle discussion will, will kind of move on uh, uninterrupt. So the idea is for me to just throw out a couple of questions pretty much as start the, the sharing, start the sharing. Okay, and what I would like to, uh, what I would like to do is, instead of very say, challenging questions, mostly it's just set your mindset. So uh, throughout the age, the, 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 and, and then uh, today you all been sitting here, you know, listening to Professor Wang, you know the topic, the theme is surrounding identity, the, the mental growth, and the things that some of those maybe you wish your parents knew at the time or now. I know some of your parents purposely not being here for that purpose, but you can talk that out so for other parents to learn what kind of things hard for kids to bring up. You know, I'll give you an example. For instance, there are some illegal immigrants, kids, they experienced the kind of crisis we discussed today, but there's no way they could share that with their parents because what could their parents do? You know, their parents themselves was very struck, was still struggling. You know, I know, uh, Linda, you were born in China, you came here at the age of six, but all the others here, you were all born here. You came here at six. You were born here, born here. Okay, so I wanted to uh, just have some of these cards, you know, very simple, uh, as opposed to having you guys all fighting over, you know, what to talk about. And once you have a, a question, it's not really like a question, question. It's pretty much, uh, yeah, it's give you something to start. And then the others can can follow to can tag along certain certain comments. Okay, so pretty much we go this way. You know, we go this way uh, so that everybody has something uh, to share. Um, so parents can join any time. You know, when you when you want to. So that's okay. Let's get started. And and meanwhile, as you're talking, I as your moderator, I might post certain questions just so that we make sure we are on the same line. Okay? Okay. So pretty much just pick a card. You have a couple minutes to prepare or yeah, you want to get started? Uh, I would say a lot. Could you give us a couple of examples? So, so your experience has been in middle school, situations were a little bit worse than high school. Because first, high school kids kind of outgrown that they knew kind of how to handle diversity. But what kind of, so some of our parents might have kids are currently in middle school. Their kids probably never told them anything. Or they will have kids going into middle school. Could you give some of the examples? Well, I guess uh, people tend to love Okay, so kids could just come up to you and just say sushi. Yeah. So I'm like, Chinese. Mm -hmm. That's just one How how usually when that kind of can happen when you were in middle school at that age? That would be about 13, 14. Yeah. 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 About 12, 13, 14. Yeah. What usually kind you know how how did you feel? Oh, I got used to it. I just 
<laughs> so you actually got used to it. Yeah, I just had to feel like I'm Chinese. Mm -hmm. So those kind of experience, or may, you feel free to add some other experience. I wanted to see uh, how, as a middle-aged kid, how you really react to it. You know, it is possible some of those things bother you, some of the things do not bother you. You know, so the parents need to know because when it comes to them, their kids probably always tell them fine, good, you know. So they wanted to know how you really feel. Another example? Did you? When, when, for you, when was that when you felt kind of confusing? So actually, when you were a teenager, yeah. actually that kind of confusing experience comes up. So sometimes our parents will say, oh, my kids feels fine. It's probably their kids are, are young enough, not, not feeling that. So for you, it's 13, 14, kind of confusing. Yeah. Um, it, it, what, what kind of impact does it have on you? When you feel confused, what, what, did it have any impact? You just withdraw. So, so, so you give people this impression: oh, Asian kids are all, you know, quiet or yeah, introvert. You know, not very social. And is that that's you think that's part of what's actually going on in your mind? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't talk much. You don't talk. I'm more introverted than extroverted. So. You look. You look quite comfortable right now. Oh, oh yeah, I got better. <laughs> So, so kids do get better, you know, even from that kind of experience. Yeah. And anything you guys wanted to add, particularly to that teenager years? Because we all parents, some of us with kids preteen or still young, we feel like a teenager, you know. Even my, my, sometimes my children will say, Mom, when I come back to, from Beijing, I will be a teenager. <laughs> so that's um, interesting. Anything to add during that critical years? Not yet? You want to add anything? Uh, all right. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to start by, um, I wrote my name wrong, my name badge. So I, I was watching my dad sign his papers this morning in Chinese, so I accidentally copied his, um, <laughs> his name. Copied his name, not his uh, first name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Copied his first name. Yeah, copied his first name. Not his last name, yeah. which you share. Um, I don't know how that happened. But um, when I was going through middle school, it wasn't because um, a lot of times in my, uh, I was in all the higher on, like the higher level classes. And even then, um, we had a pretty good mix between uh, Caucasian and Asian. And um, so I had a lot of Caucasian friends starting from uh, well, from middle, uh, from beginning of elementary school, because um, it always seemed that I would be in the one class where I was the only Asian person in my class, mm -hmm. and then other classes would have like ten Asians in one class, and I would be the only one in mine. So I got used really quickly to interacting with a lot of Caucasian people. So when I moved into elementary school, um, I had a good base. Um, uh, when I moved into middle school, I had a good base from elementary school. So. Um, they were able to connect me with some of their friends, so I got to meet their friends. And uh, ever since then, it's it's been growing. And I found that a lot of my friends who had um, a primarily Asian class in elementary school mm -hmm. uh, tend to stick with the Asians throughout the rest of the year. So if they, uh, particularly from what your observation was, if, uh, if the kids, when they were in elementary school, if they started uh, to have um, Asian friends in their class, they tend to be more uh, likely to associate, associate with Asian uh, students in the in the uh, higher grades. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, I had a lot, you know, I have a lot of Asian friends too, and I, I guess I sort of, I hang out with them um, mm -hmm. more compared to Caucasians. Mm -hmm. But um, I was lucky that I had a lot of Caucasian friends. That because of your prior years' yeah. experience. Okay. Yeah. Something to to take a note of. Okay, uh, did you so so looking back? Let's we're talking about middle middle school years. Uh, did you feel that um, anything related to race in particular 
that had a negative impact. Because I know it could be have a lot of positive impact, but today, uh, you know, because of time, we're just focusing. We want we parents. We want to zoom in on the negative feelings. You know, tell me the things my parent, my, my kids wouldn't tell me. You know, you know, the, what what are, was there any kind of negative kind of impact related to identity, race in your own experience? Uh, yeah, most of the time, you know, everybody assumes an Asian person to be very smart because mm -hmm. most of the time we are. Oh. Um, I only have. I only know one Asian person in our grade who's below average mm -hmm. and who's not in the highest level of math, mm -hmm. um, which maybe it's just because my township is very good or maybe, I don't know. But um, Was there any kind of negative impact on you? No, it's all positive. Uh, That's they, they kind of uh, uh, just walk into these stereotypes, so make, make, make their life a little bit more challenging, you think, than you are? Maybe like twice a year at most. They they got count. Yeah. They they will feel something. So so better quantitative on than twice a year. So so in general, from your experience, you 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 don't think it's overwhelming in middle school, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's because we're like in the northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, that like there's not a lot that prejudice like racism and prejudice isn't that like heavy and um, intense. Mm -hmm. Like as opposed if we go say down south or out into like the Midwest where it's primarily Caucasian mm -hmm. or like the only Asian kid, mm -hmm. it's a lot more. Okay, <laughs> thank you. a lot more. So, so that's kind of reassuring for us parents, you know, okay, we're in the right kind of area. <laughs> yeah. you know. So uh, then, you s so in most of the impact, as you discussed, you know, it's mostly coming from inside, you know, like feel confused or a little bit, a little bit but not too, not too bad. Yeah. yeah. What, what was your card? Uh, my part is, what was your experience like when you were in elementary school? Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I moved here from Delaware, and uh, there are a few Asian people in my class. Um, at most, I can remember maybe two or three others, but most of the time, uh, I didn't have any real troubles um, adapting. Um, my neighbor was Chinese, and uh, Ever since then, we've been very good friends, but I've also gotten to be very good friends with my other neighbors, and I still keep in touch. Who are not? Yeah, Chinese. Not Chinese. Okay. Yeah. So your family actually chose to be uh, sociable with both neighbors, uh, or, or just you try to try to get to know the non Asians? It was probably because like, um, it was a new community with okay. all new buildings, so mm -hmm. everybody had to get, get to know each other very well. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's like building a new community rather than moving into a new one. Mm. So um, everybody was encouraged to know each other a lot more. Mm. And uh, I had a pretty American childhood. Like okay. we would play baseball in the summer and stuff like that. Um, but that didn't extend to me. That extended to my Chinese neighbor too. Mm. Um, so we both kind of had a Americanized uh, childhood rather than a more traditional Chinese childhood. Mm -hmm. When you look back, you know, at that kind of age, elementary age, elementary school, in your little head, were you very conscious, like, oh, I'm Chinese American, I need to associate with Chinese American, you know, like consciously. Now, now you look back, or conscious or unconsciously, was there a was was it a factor or at all? Because we wanted to know, we wanted to be able to read our kids, you know, what was it? Probably, you know, yes or no. Or? Well, I guess in elementary school, mm -hmm. you're small. You don't really like think about these things. Mm -hmm. You just play with everyone. Correct. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think um, um, our uh, kids here are very nice um, because um, I actually in, in elementary school, because we're talking about this, um, is very rebellious. Uh, I'm not your goody goody two shoe um, study well, you know. Um, I actually failed um, a lot of my courses, one first, second, third grade, and in fourth grade, my um, my teacher wanted to let me back because I was not doing well. Uh, well, the reason why um, I wasn't doing well, I mean, obviously later on when I thought back to it, is because I was um, always the outcast. Always, um, when I moved here when I was six years old, so I came here um, from first grade on, and my English wasn't well, so um, I've always been put on like the side, okay, you're just a person who doesn't speak English. So I kind of accepted that, 
And um, I said, okay, well, if everybody expected I don't do well, well, with the exception of my parents, obviously, but every, everybody else, you know, it's okay if she doesn't do well. So I became like, okay, it's okay that I don't do, do well. And then later on, as time passed uh, in fourth grade, that my teacher actually wanted to let me back, it's because um, I talk a lot in class, but my grades were not improving. Um, and then obviously there's also like some racism that was put into uh, the fact because I was very outspoken. I would challenge the teachers all the time, and um, but my grades weren't that good because you know teachers are okay with you know students that do well in class but challenge them. But I challenged her in a negative way, and so just because of my behavior, she has um, you know graded my tests. Um, like my essays or things like that, um, in a higher, uh, to be a little bit harder on me, so she would purposely fail me in that aspect. And I think that like that part of racism from my teacher really affected me later on. I mean, after that, you know, it kind of got to me and be like, okay, I need to study. So from fifth grade on, I was a um, super kid. But <laughs> before then, it was, um, it was really tough. So that was actually in elementary school. It was in elementary school. That's all the way through fifth, sixth grade? That's oh, well, I was grade. in the New York system, so it's first to sixth grade. First to sixth. Yeah. So that kind of thing could happen, you're telling us, in elementary school. So so the, uh, in this case, uh, it may or may not be related to the fact that you came here with not so good English at the time. Uh, but the bottom line is that the, it, the teacher actually could allow this to become a factor that impacting you. I think that's something we parents really like to know. So, so you were re re rebellious, but but when you were in high school, you, you weren't that only one that below average, right? You were already caught up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, it took that the well. I mean, uh, there's a lot of factor that got into the reason why in fifth grade I became into the honor system and things like that. But it's there. Uh, I constantly had the re uh, negative reinforcement from everybody else besides my parents. You know, they wanted me to do well, but they don't know how to help me. What did your parents have to tell you? Would you share with us? Uh, you know, if you say get a bad grade, you came home. What was it like in your case? I, okay, I will find out what your parents said. But what your parents <laughs> said about it? Well, the the thing is, um, like I said, I was very rebellious. Yes. So in, in how old the, were you? Six, six, seven years old? Yeah, six, seven years old. I was very rebellious. Yeah. So sometimes when report cards come, I don't even tell my parents until it's like forced. And then I'm like, oh, just sign this. Oh, gotta go. Okay. I'm you know, things like that. So um, I'm not your typical like Asian kid. Sure, sure. So did they ca get a chance to even comment on your behavior or give you the support or well, criticism? The only word was you have to do good or else. And then, you know, that's it. They never told you what else was. Well, it's it's um you know it's uh, understood that you know you'll get beatings, you'll not have anything, and you know no your toys, no nothing. It's un it's understood. It's really? like this unspoken language between a mother okay. and a child. Will you, will you ever get beat beat up? Of course, of course. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> Sounds like you deserved it. <laughs> I, I know. I yeah, honestly I, I, think I did. But then I think there um, there were other things that my parents could have uh, tried to understand me a little bit yeah. more because I was constantly getting negative reinforcement instead of positive. Correct. Um, looking back, because we're talking about elementary school, what do you wish your parent had done to help you? given the circumstances you were in? Well, I think they could have cared a little bit more about how I really think versus how I'm doing academically mm -hmm. and how like, I'm behave behaving in school or mm -hmm. how I'm behaving in class. Because, I mean, um, you know, I don't want to go into details of child psychology. It's mm -hmm. because, um, you know, if you constantly um, tell your kids you have to do this but with no reason, of why you need to do this. It is hard for a child to constantly understand, well, why do I need to get an A? Why do I need to be good? And then also at the same time, I'm getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the attention if I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the attention mm -hmm. if I behave in a inappropriate way. Correct. So, so, so you would wish the parent could have given you more kind of guidance in terms of 
the, 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 the reasons behind their, their expectations. Yeah. Or, or, so that's, now you, you know, but at the time you never asked them for why. Or, well, or they didn't know. <laughs> you didn't know, you know, like all of the kids, you know. Well, so tell me, I, I saw you laughing. Like, what, what was your parents' uh, comments you were, like, when you bring back home a uh, um, <laughs> report card? Back, right? um, um, let's see, by this time I think I have my parents' lectures all memorized by heart. Oh. What was it like? <laughs> There's the, uh, we came to America for you, uh, and you have to <laughs> <laughs> There's that one, there's the, um, you don't do good, you'll embarrass the family, and we'll lose face. Mm. Um, yeah, those two are pretty big ones. Okay, so <laughs> did, how, what kind of impact were those comments on you at the time? I know, it, it's like, it, it makes you feel really guilty. Mm. Guilt trip. Like, you are the, you're really responsible good. for them. Like coming to America, yeah. <laughs> not being happy. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 thank you, thank you. So, anything you you like to add to uh, elementary? Well, um, about the whole report card and grades issue. Well, sometimes like um, I remember last year I came home and like um, my report card it was like straight A pluses, like it couldn't get any better. And my parents' reaction, it was just like, oh, good, good job, you know? It wasn't anything like, wow, you know, good job. It was just some like monotone, like, that's, that's great, you know? It's like, it's, it's expected, kind of. But um, the thing about, like, it's also like in um, a lot of Caucasian parents, like, one thing I like about them is like, um, they really like compliment and like support their kids. Like, um, when, when, when they have like some big achievement, they really show like, you know, that, um, their children like worked hard and and they really show that they like you know they're proud of them. So when and, and, and when you were young, you know I know this thing just happened last year, but when you were young, you know, did you notice that being a Chinese, you receive different kind of reaction from your parents than your your Caucasian or, or non-Chinese kids? Did you notice that? Were, were you were you aware of you know as you described? So when you describe, oh, let me paraphrase. Well, what you describe is now you know. You know, you know, the, 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 their, the, their, uh, their parents will throw a party if they get like all B plus, you know? <laughs> and and, and, and uh, uh, my parents, you know, didn't say just, uh, you know, and uh, A plus. <laughs> so that's, now you know. When you were younger, did you know that? Or you just didn't know? You were, um, not really, like when, when I was little, like, you know, you're little, you don't, you don't really think so you just, your, your dad tells you to get good grades, you just get good grades, and then what, so when you get good grades, he didn't celebrate, you just feel that's the way it is. You know. what, or or what, 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 what was going on? Um, well, I don't really remember. <laughs> you don't know Good. Either it's too happy, nothing happened, or too painful to remember. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about elementary schools, just from that angle. Would you like to read your card? What was your experience like when you were in high school? Well, um, we're talking about identity, or yeah, in that, in, in that. Yeah, sense. I know high school tend to be whoa, everything's yeah. going on. What do you want me to talk about the experience? But more, mostly related to being a Chinese. You know, again, you know, anything parents didn't know, know at the time. You know, anything ne negative, particular you know, that, that we parents really wanted to know? Well, um, in, from ever since like elementary school and onward, I, well, I have to, my background, I, I grew up in New York. So obviously there's a lot of Asian people there. So I never really had an identity crisis kind of um, when I was growing up. I was knew I was Chinese, I was born there and I came here so I have like this big memory. Never had any issue until um, I moved here in, my junior year of high school, where it's a very suburban area um, of the, the Asians, and I would say Asians, because I don't even know if they're Chinese or not, because I never spoke with them. Um, they, they are very Americanized. Uh, they don't speak their language. They don't even go around, you know. They just know that they are Asian, and that's, that's it. Like, it's on the surface. It's like wearing, you know, polo or something. As opposed to your former Asian friends. They yes. actually spoke the language. They Yeah, they know. They, they're, they're comfortable with themselves. Like, I'm comfortable with myself mm -hmm. until, until I moved here, where 
um, the identity issue starts to grow. Whereas in, um, yeah, like, I don't really, we don't really discuss race. We don't really discuss anything. It's more of, you know, wherever is in fashion or school grades. And obviously that time is like, you know, SATs and things like that. But nothing really related to, um, like, identity. And then I myself were having trouble because now, like before, we, my friends and I would always talk about these, being Asian American and not parents understanding and things like that, you know, venting to each other. But now when I have all these new friends, I felt like I was losing. Mm. You feel suddenly they don't have the kind of problem you have. Yeah. They all, like this, what do we call them? Banana? What, you know, they, they, they all... <laughs> white 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 banana. What What? White washed. White washed white 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 bananas. <laughs> Oh, just whitewashed. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so for you, it was a change, and and and, and, and it wasn't. Am I understanding you sounded like it was more a geographic change, not as yeah. aged. You no, think, you, a, when you talk to your older friends, were they in the same boat with you, or they were still kind of feel comfortable with their identity because they were in New York? No, I think it's, it was the geographic change mm -hmm. that. Um, well, first of all, I was. Um, I, when I was in high school, I went to Brooklyn Tech High School. It's a pretty prestigious high school where everybody come to, like there are mostly Asians who take these uh, standardized tests to come in. So um, the each class population was a thousand. Um, so that's four years, that's 4,000 people in one school. And then like 40% are Asian. So I would have no problem with any Asian friends. And then when I moved here, it was like a huge change, you know. Now you have, you know, um, the population grew smaller and uh, the ability to find friends become, like, you know, limited. And then... What, what was it like when you went through that? Uh, you know, you, you don't have friends to vent when you feel your parents didn't understand you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so you, what, what actually do you, now looking back, what went through your, your mind? You know, like anything can negative, positive, you know, bothering you? Um, during that time, it was definitely negative experience. Whereas in, um, all of a sudden, you know, Miss Popular became Miss Nobody. <laughs> you used to be popular. Right? Yes, yeah, I used to be popular. Okay, now you become Miss. <laughs> and then I become Miss Nobody. And everybody in that area grew up ever since they, they were, they were toddlers together. Yeah. And then I'm an outsider coming in and, you know, they, they don't know me. They for as much as they don't, they think that I only speak Asian, like Asian language. They don't care what language I spoke. They, I spoke Asian language, and that to them was a different language. So I had a really hard time finding friends, mm -hmm. um, period. So it was, it was a negative experience, which now is rewarding, mm -hmm. because I saw everything from a different perspective. Correct. Correct. But back then, what was your parents' role in that whole confusion or suffering? Well, my parents really um, just said, suck it up, basically. They just kept telling to suck it up. Just yeah, this is life, okay. move on, you know, just one step at a time. And, but mentally, as you know, um, just being a teenager, mm -hmm. can, that kind of a change, mm -hmm. like with nobody really understanding, and then I would talk to my friends from New York, they don't understand me now, mm -hmm. because now I have, I'm in a different environment, which I can't, they really can't relate to. Mm -hmm. And then my, uh, my new limited friends mm -hmm. um, don't really understand me, period. Mm -hmm. so, so did you talk to your parents about what kind of help you may wish they were giving you? At the time. Um, no, there is no um, communication about it. I just told them I don't really like this place, mm -hmm. and you know their response. Mm -hmm. And then um, mostly, it be, I became more um, innate mm -hmm. from that because nobody can, I it can talk to anybody, mm -hmm. and nobody can talk to me because they don't really understand me. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it it turned into um, I would say like a, a mental health issue, mm. whereas in um, I was not healthy mentally because now um, instead of you know talking on the phone, going out with friends, I would be, be very happy to go home and sleep. Mm. And the best part is to be covered in a blanket where it's pitch dark. Oh. I remember that was the, the best experience <laughs> for me. That was me. in uh, ninth grade. 
No, no, that's in um, jun junior, junior, yeah. 11th, 11th, 12th grade, yeah. 11th, 12th, yeah. So, so, so that's when you suspect yourself could be not physically, mentally healthy. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, so, I mean, we're talking about mental health issue. Oh, I, I'm okay with people knowing that I was clinically depressed at that period of time. Um, I, you know, you watch television, they have all these, you know, commercials, and you're like, oh, you know, I'm kind of fitting these categories. So, you know, going online, researching about what's going on. I mean, I brought up the subject. I was like, Mom, I think I'm not, you know, all there, you know, mentally, because, you know, from a big change of emotions to, to that. My parents don't accept it. You know, it's, uh, I, I don't know if they really was in denial or if they just really don't like to know. You know, it's not something that they, you know, they're proud of because, uh, in a sense, I mean, I'm suspecting that they felt guilty uh, moving me from such a, nice place that I call it mm -hmm. um, to here mm -hmm. but I mean they wanted a different change for me because you know there's too much gangsters in like New York and things like that but which, then, which you are very popular you know so they felt but they felt sort of guilty I think did, I suspect did, did, at the time did, yes. you, did you feel they were guilty no I think that they're just being unreasonable so at the time mm -hmm. as a teenager you see them as being unreasonable Mm -hmm. I'm understanding. Yeah. You're only saying that they were guilty now as yeah. a grown up. So at the time, if you told them you have this, you have this suspicion about your your mental state. Mm -hmm. So did, what, what was was your mind telling us a little oh. bit more? Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. Um, so then what happened? I have to lie to my parents saying that I'm having headache, which is one of the symptoms of being um, clinically de uh, depressed. It's having, you know, really bad headaches. And I would, I went to my doctor, I, um, you know, on um, headache situation, and I talked to him, you know, a little bit more uh, about how I was feeling, how I was under, uh, what, what was going on in my change and things like that. So he diagnosed me, he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not in need of a psychiatrist, you know, I'm bi not bipolar or anything, but um, he said that I should go on, you know, antidepressant pills mm -hmm. for a while, which, um, which I did, and I told my parents it's for headaches, mm -hmm. which, because um, I've spoken to them about it a little bit, you know, like kind of like hinting a little bit, mm -hmm. but they are not receptive to it, so I just discarded it until two, week, two months after um, taking uh, the antidepressant when I saw a change in myself and then I came out to the open and I told my mom about it and then she still was in denial. She's like, oh, you should stop. It's, you know, you, it, um, I think my mom loved to be best as a, as a doctor. She likes to be the doctor of the family. She likes to diagnose me. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of parents too. Like moms tend to feel like they want like to be doctors. Um, then she was telling me, you're, you're going to be dependent on it and everything like that. And she convinced me not to um, take the uh, drugs, but I let her believe that because I already spoke with my doctor and my doctor said, you're fine and you don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, I think it, it, was, it was difficult. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, it was it was difficult with all that changes and with that kind of experience. Yet you felt looking back, parents could have given you different kind of guidance. What kind of guidance would you wish they kind of gave you? Um, or, or support? If, I mean, like, if they listen, I, mean, kind of, I think they, they listen. They really you you listen. wish they had listened. Yes, because I was just saying before they dismissed me with, mm -hmm. oh, it's okay, mm -hmm. it's all right, you need to deal with it, you know, go on. Mm -hmm. But rather, like, really sitting down and really, not, I mean, not to, like, you know, be a psychiatrist and really find exactly right. what's wrong, right. but at least would listen to what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. instead of, I think maybe I didn't have to be pushed to, right. you know, um, to stay, and I, I had an early recognition of what's going on, but then if it was not detected early mm -hmm. enough, I would have been suicidal mm -hmm. or things like Correct. that. Correct. So I was very uh, um, glad that I, you know, I saw this commercial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you saw the commercial, that's very fortunate. You know, wait, uh, let me just try something. If, if I were a parent, you know, with thought like you, uh, then if I would, when you were talking to me, these things, you know, if I would just say, you know, no, no, I don't have any medical background. If I would just say, 
Oh, really? Honey, let's sit down. Tell me more about it. Is that how you feel? Well, I'm, I'm so sorry you felt this way, really. Uh, anything I could help to make you even feel better? I mean, I, I probably don't, can't really help you to feel, solve all your problems, or, or, or I, I probably, Mom, I, I can't really find friends for you. But um, anything else you think I could help? If that kind of thing, I mean, looking back, do you think might be a good start? Or I think it's very important. Or you don't think, oh, well, that's too shallow still. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think it's very important for you know parents, my parents and I, to build a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if I came out, and I, I was reluctant to tell my parents mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a very good personal relationship. Okay. okay. So, and if my mom came down and said that, I was like, oh, that's too surface. You know, okay. but if we had a very good relationship, then I think it would have been so much easier for me to come out and say, like, well, look, you know, I have this problem, you know, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my understanding is because of this lack of communication leading to that age, so all you could do was try to hint the parents something was not right going on, and then then parents uh, continuing that pattern of communication kind of just dismiss it and and. So, so, so you're telling me actually kids at that age actually would love to talk to their parents. I mean, to share if they we have. I mean, now looking back, it's not like oh no, no kids wants to talk to their parents. Or I mean, what kind of? No, I think uh, it's my personal preference to want my parents to know what's going on mm -hmm. because I felt that. Um, I felt it's very important because my parents are in charge of my, me financially and uh, <laughs> shelter as well. So it's very important for um, and transportation as well mm -hmm. too. So if I need to go somewhere, I need my parents to you know allow me to go and things like that. So I really want them to understand mm -hmm. like why I want to go to this party. You know, it's not because I want to. Well, yeah, I want to hang out with my friends, but you know, maybe it's something else or. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really like to look at the dress or something like. I mean, it could be something very shallow mm -hmm. or something like that. But it's um, it, I think it's very important for my mom to understand why I want to do certain things. And now you want your mom to understand. Back then, did you wish your mom? Yeah, understand? yeah, I constantly. Okay, okay. So as you said, uh, it's interesting. You said at least for you, you wish your mom could talk to you more, or you wanted to talk to your mom. Uh, don't don't feel you could be the single case. We've had this forum multiple times. Every time, it's the same voice. Kids telling us, teenagers telling us, I wish I could talk to my parents more. And usually, here, correct me, you know, or, or, or I want to hear your comments. Yeah. It's the parents' perception. So, but the, our kids don't want to talk to us. I mean, they want to talk to their friends. And when they talk to us, it's just two words, you know? Good, fine, no problem. No. <laughs> What do you think, you know, how, help us here? Some of us may be in previous sessions, but some of us may not be. You know, we wanted to understand that. What leads to that, or what, what, what's your comment? Well, I guess um, my parents came here, and we all as immigrants, and mm -hmm. they had to work hard. So they, both my parents worked. So I, I was like home alone most of the time. Mm -hmm. And they would come home pretty late and they were tired, and they didn't have time to like talk to me, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess like parents have to start from a young age to talk to the kids. Because now it's like kind of late and I don't feel comfortable talking to my friends anymore. So you, you, what you're telling me, this is very, very, yeah. you know, very, very interesting, you know. So you're saying, yeah, right, you need to talk to us when we were young. Yeah. Setting that, opening that, that communication channel. Then, when we we're teenagers, we, don't, we wouldn't feel uncomfortable talking. Yeah. And I guess another thing is, there's the whole Chinese thing about um, parents are like your elders. Mm. You're supposed to like respect them. Mm. It's not like really with Caucasians where they view the parents as like friends. Mm. So I guess that's probably like another thing that gets in the way of uh, kids and the parents having like really deep discussions. Yes. <laughs> so 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 in in your mind, what would you would you if you had a choice, <laughs> would you rather have parents like friends or? Well, or I guess they have to be like a good balance between like a friend and. Uh, Okay, so so you want them to be friend, but not friend friend. Like your friend will will, uh, yeah. will, 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 will just agree, you know, with you whatever mm -hmm. you do, you know. So you wanted the balance. That's that's interesting. Anything to add to that? Oh yeah. Well, I have something to add. Like, 
Um, throughout my high school, well, throughout my, before graduating from college, I had a very um, bad relationship with my, me and my parents because, um, like I said, they never really tried to understand. But then um, after fighting with them, you know, multiple fights, um, after going away for college and then coming back, my dad actually was very surprisingly, um, he said, he's like, you know, maybe I wasn't a good father or we weren't good parents. He's, um, he's like, well, I was reading this article on, you know, somewhere, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know, I'm starting to see why you were so rebellious, you know, kind of um, way. And then I think... Um, was like owning the responsibility to himself. Yeah, he, well, he, um, he took on a part of the responsibility, which made me feel better, like I wasn't like this horrible child, you know? But at the same time, um, that, because of that conversation, our, um, really, my relationship with my parents are so much better. Um, because now I feel like, um, not that we're on the same grounds or something like that, because, you know, they're still, I have to respect them, they're my parents. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, uh, uh, the fact that there is a closer step mm -hmm. towards each other, mm -hmm. whereas, and I see that um, we're meeting somewhere mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now he's like saying that, oh, you know, um, I, I maybe I wasn't that great, you know, maybe now I'm gonna try to sit down and listen to you. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that really helped um, our relationship. That's interesting. It sort of sounded to me like more of this lesser me here, you here, and as opposed to, yes. you know, a little leveling, you know, you know, maybe I could be wrong too, that kind of friendship, more like that, and that actually opened up the whole, whole, yeah. the, uh, the whole thing a lot more. You know, what was your experience with your parents? Um, I'm on this side to rather, I'd rather talk to my friends with my parents, because I have a really good group of friends, mm -hmm. and um, one of them, and we're all very successful, mm -hmm. um, both academically and outside of school, and so I trust them a lot with a lot of stuff. Um, one of my friends, he's very talented musically. He's a all-state saxophone, and you know, um, he's online, and you can find him. He's very, he's very good. My other friend, um, he just like I can trust him a lot with a lot of stuff, and all uh, we have our own like special way of dealing with problems. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of problems. Most of the time, if we have a problem, we'll like laugh it out somehow, mm -hmm. turn into a joke, and. Um, that usually works, mm -hmm. um, but for stuff that you have to talk to your parents, mm -hmm. I'm not sure because both of them had pretty, um, pretty liberal parents. Mm -hmm. um, like I asked my friend this question, and um, and I asked if I had a party today, and there, my friend was scheduled to have another party tomorrow, mm -hmm. and my other friend was scheduled to have another party after that, mm -hmm. would my parents let me go to all three? Mm -hmm. And no matter how much work I had, how how much or how little work I had, they wouldn't let me go to all three. And then both of their parents, both of them agreed, and I agree with them. And they said, um, as long as I was able to finish my schoolwork and the parties did not like inhibit my academic growth, I would let you go to all three parties. And that's something I couldn't understand because, like, you could or couldn't. I couldn't. Okay. Because I would go to one party and then my parents would say. Um, and then after that, I would want to go to like a movie theater the next day to see a movie. And they would say, you're spending too much time having fun, you should spend more time studying. Mm. Even though you finished all your exactly. work. Exactly, and I finished all my work, and I do even more stuff that, you know, that I don't really have to do right away. Mm -hmm. And um, yet they still don't want me to have too much fun. Mm. And, you fun know, is bad, which I don't think it's a waste of time. But, but go ahead. Yeah. I, I can understand their point mm. now. Mm. but. Um, both my friend's parents are pretty liberal, so mm -hmm. uh, they take a more rational, I guess, route. Um, and I'm, not, I'm undecided to which one is better, because mm -hmm. um, I fully disagree with their method of thinking, mm -hmm. and there's like, you know, if I can finish this, 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 why not go to all three parties, mm -hmm. you know, because then I have more fun, and I learn more. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your friends were non-Chinese? Uh, they are Chinese. They are Chinese, yeah. but they actually have uh, more liberal yeah, yeah, parents. parents than you you have. Uh -huh. and, okay. Um, my parents. I mean, I'm trying to argue with them to see it that way. Now. Mm. And um, a lot of my arguments are usually me trying to use reason, and mm. then they're trying to refute it now. But just use the power. Yeah. 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 And um, you're trying to reason. They should, but this is exactly. Yeah. Okay. And um, and now.
like whenever I have a debate with my friend, I'm actually arguing both with my friend and against my friend because mm -hmm. I agree with my parents, but I also agree with my friends. So you can find more and more your your, your parents in you now. So yeah. there's certain things they yeah. say more enough, you know. You know, that's sometimes I tell the truth, that's sometimes uh, there's rumor falling flow, floating around of parents here. I tell you that they say, even though they don't want to listen, keep talking about it. One of these days it's gonna sink in. I mean, that's the, what my parents are talking about, to tell the truth, you know. So do you, have you ever wonder, you know, why these parents kept saying these things? I'm not listening, man. That's hard to believe. I'm just sharing that with you. I'm not saying, I, you know, I'm better or worse or I agree or disagree. But it's interesting that you actually, I mean, the fact is that you would actually start saying things sort of in your parents' voice because you heard it enough, in a way. So, so you, you, when you're arguing with yourself, I'm not encouraging parents to do that, but I'm just saying that's sometimes what the what happens. Um, but I, I think it's interesting. So, so you pretty much felt that you had a very group, good group of friends to grow up with. So at the time, whether you were in adult, um, adolescence, or teenager years, you didn't feel a lot of say, burning desire to say vent with your parents or wish your parents understand more. To you, it wasn't like that. It's actually more like, um, I wish that, well last year for me, like for example, um, I had not bad teachers, but ones that tended to grade harder on me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and all my friends had the, uh, easier teachers. had the easier teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's more like I was trying to, uh, I was being more hard on myself than my parents being hard on me, but they were still pretty hard on me. So, like them being hard on me just added to my burden. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling enough pressure on myself, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really need their added help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe I'm pretty successful. Um, um, I take a lot of leadership roles, mm -hmm. and um, you know, leader of a lot of clubs after school, and mm -hmm. my grades are very well. And I went to um, science competitions, you know. Uh, politics competitions, mm -hmm. debate competitions. And I did very well in all of them. And like, I believe I'm pushing myself hard enough, mm -hmm. but then they add more mm -hmm. burden on mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But so now I kind of just like ignore their burden now. Mm -hmm. So you kind of learned, to, you have a, this, uh, uh, you have this mechanism to, to deal with the, 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 the pressure. So, or from, from coming from them. If, if among us, there, there are parents who have children like you, you know, with all these signs, uh, you know, of uh, involvement, self-motivation, what would you wish they do with their children? I mean, their children are just like you. What would you like to tell them to do with their children? Um, I think, like, my township is, where are you? Yeah. What township? East Front? Oh, yeah, I know East Front. Actually, all of us are. Uh, we're from pretty good competitive schools, but, um, and I guess I'm more competitive than some of my classmates. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess that competition drives us um, to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us, I, I went to, I, I volunteered at the hospital on Sundays, and during the information session, I went there and I asked how many people from my grade were volunteering there. And I noticed that the entire list was Asian, and <laughs> almost the entire list. And then, um, so I think from our, we have around 90 Asian people in our grade, uh -huh. and 86 of them apply wow. to, the hospital. to the hospital. So that just shows like how much like we're all self-motivated to yes. work, and um, I guess it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you wish their parents do with you? Um, uh, to give them like more rooms or or keep the hammer on, you know. Uh, the, how, what would you like to tell them? That's, that's a really hard question because um, you can, some students I see that no matter how hard you push them, mm -hmm. once you stop pushing them, they'll, they'll become lazy and they won't do anything. But then they already do the kind of thing you do. They already get the kind of grades you get. You know, you don't wish your parents keep the pressure on, or do you? Uh, I, I'm not, I think I would like them to keep a very minimal amount of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but but don't don't just say oh yeah you got it down and you know you, I trust. So you still have that a little bit self doubt. You say at this age you you like the parents have a little pressure on, but just don't 
don't overdo it. Yeah. Because you pretty much, you know, you need that a little bit extra room to you, you fill that. Okay, so that's interesting. We have a new, new chance to talk for a while. You want to share something? Uh, in particular, where were we? we? We started with high school, you know, and the, the parents, you said you, you just started high school, right? Yes, so, okay. But in just in general, uh, what was your, is your dad here? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's okay, okay. So anything, any, because uh, we have 15 minutes left, anything you want to talk about, let's say, uh, what, what do you have here? Um, well, my question, it says, um, what kind of friends did you have when you were in middle school? Mm -hmm. Well, um, okay, so about that, um, well, in elementary school, like, um, it was like, I kind of had, like, um, friends, like, in, like, from, like, every race, like, um, I think that was because, though, um, it was because, like, like, starting kind of from middle school, like, the classes they divide into like you know honors and like higher level classes, and um, the Asians like a lot of them they tend to be in the higher level classes. Mm -hmm. So in middle school, like I just like kind of made friends with them. So you in middle school you were more like uh, you, you were in advanced class, right? Yeah. Or, or, or the, with these Asian kids. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but you just said you have friends of all kinds of. Um. Yeah, but I was in elementary school. And the military school, and, and moving on, yeah. okay. But then in middle school, as like they divided, mm -hmm. um, in sixth grade, we were still kind of friends, but then they just kind of like, it, it was kind of like we got farther and farther apart as like um, the classes got, you know, more like, like, um, they, like my friends, like, we, they were really good friends, but um, they, they weren't too smart, so. <laughs> Um, so they kind of like drifted away because mm -hmm. um, I was in like you know higher classes mm -hmm. and they were in like um, like classes like lower. What so kind of friends do you have then? You know, in middle school, do you, did you actually have more Asian friends? Turn out to be um, yeah. So in middle school, I think um, like yeah, I got more and more Asian friends. More and more Asian friends, but in your case, it was more because the the, the academic kind of the level you were you were all in. I mean, uh, look, looking back. Would you, you know, do you have any 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 thing to say about having American friends or, or you know non Chinese friends versus versus Asian non Asian friends versus Asian friends? Were, were, were there any issues there? You know, other than the fact you were just in the same class. Mm, well, what happened was um, I remember like some of my. Like um, in middle school, like social levels kind of started to form. Mm. And social, social what? Social life. Social levels. <laughs> social social levels clicks. Xiao Ji Huan. Um, and and the thing was like, some of the people who are like you know really like popular now, like I was best friends with them in like first or second grade, and um, but like. It's, I think it's like a lot of it's like due to the, you know, different classes and everything that happens. Um, but, yeah. So, so, so in her case, it wasn't so by, by, a, by a choice. Say, I just wanted to be friends with them because they look like me. So, so it, wasn't, it wasn't quite like that. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, well, you all have a chance to say. I, I wanted to see whether any of our audience, parents, you know, wanted to have any questions for them. You know, you're very welcome to come over. Uh, or you're really, really shy, you can just stand up and talk. Yeah. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, because we have pretty much kept identity in terms of the American culture and Chinese culture. For example, the way uh, we eat our dinner, that's when my, my six-year-old just told me she went to an Indian friend's house and came back. And that, that family happened to be very formal at dining. So everybody was served this big dish, this small dish, this small soup, kind of very neat. So she came home and complained that our dinner was messy because we put the, the dishes in the middle and just share, right? And uh, so I was angry. I said, oh, you know, are Chinese. I said, I like to be Chinese. I just don't like the way we eat. <laughs> so then, the, then later on, she said, you know, Mom, I know. We are Chinese. We like the messy way. They are Indian. They like the neat way. It made me feel very bad. So I just want to see in your daily life and the way your parents deal with you, talk with you, uh, play or not play sports with you, 
what are the things might add to the confusion or is the confusion or how to develop your identity? Well, in school, I, me and a couple of my friends, um, we try to get them to give out chopsticks during cafeteria. So I even have to eat with forks and spoons to use chopsticks, but they didn't allow us to. <laughs> So you, any, any, any time when you had a questions about the anything related to this identity things, your parents try to help by actually make things worse. You know, they're or they they're pretty pretty cool. They, they, I think I resolved my identity thing on my own. So you pretty much I think resolve your identity issue per se on on your own. So so your parents didn't help or make it worse. I, I really don't have that issue that much. Like I haven't thought about it until today. <laughs> I, I, I I heard the, the I heard as a as a boy thing, you know, of not having too much of an identity issue until they're in college. So just wait, you know. we, we don't know. We don't know. We we want to hear about it. You know, how about you, you wanna answer the sign Sandra's question or not not in particular? We don't have to. You know. Oh well. Um. Um, identity issue, um, like I said, I, I grew up in, uh, in New York and then uh, I came here and I spoke a little bit yesterday with you, is that I see identity as in um, three different categories, as you're being Chinese, you're being American Chinese, and you're being Chinese American. <laughs> um, it's, the, the reason why that came about is um, because I noticed when I was in New York, I know I was Chinese, I was practicing cultures, um, but I have a lot of American ideas, but I put Chinese first because I know I'm Chinese, I know I'm different, um, not in a bad way, but just I'm, you know, a, a minority. Whereas when I came to New Jersey, I noticed a lot, like I was explaining before, I noticed a lot of people really didn't see themselves as Chinese. They saw themselves as American, but just wearing, you know, Chinese skin. Um, so, and then, you know, we had differences. Um, uh, of that, so my like I was trying to explain to my parents. I was like, they're like, oh, there's Asian people here. You can be friends with them because I was complaining. I was like, but they're not really Asian. <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah, not really. Asian. They don't think they're Asian. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, chances are a lot of these are left to kids to figure it out. Any questions? Okay, that's good. Okay, add something. Well, like I think for me actually, it's more about what other people decide my identity rather than what I decide my identity to be. Because if you ask an Asian person my grade what they think I am, and they'll say I'm Asian. If you ask a white person, they'll say I'm white. And if you ask an African-American, they'll say I'm African-American. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. okay. Multiple identities. Well, any other questions? Yes, come over here. The runner. Most of your kids are wonderful kids, you know, have great grades. One question I have is now, especially for Linda, you guys look back, most of the Chinese parents are very pushing. You have to play piano, excellent grades, have to know all the activities. You look back, should we be pushing or should we back off? Like Do you think those activities eventually benefit you in your life? Um, I, I just want to make one little comment. Uh, um, my, I loved music, and my mom saw that when I was a little bit younger, and she immediately thought I should be a musician. So, um, <laughs> we're, we're parents tend to do that. Yeah, so they, they, I, I still do love music, but now I hate piano because my mom pushed me so much to the point that every time I see the piano, I would run away. Until this day, I, my piano is still sitting at home, and only when my parents are not there, I will go play it, because I'm afraid that if I start playing in front of my parents, she'll be like, oh, you're talented again. So she'll push me again. <laughs>
Um, well, I think that like um, it, it, it does benefit them, but I think like they should be like nicer about it, mm -hmm. and like they should be like trying to like explain it more, like why why they're making them do it. Um, we thought we explained to kids. They just like don't sink in. We, do we need to constantly explaining ourselves? What do you think? Well, um, a lot of times it's just like you know do it. You know it'll get you into like Harvard. You know be smarter. But, That's um, not good enough reason, right? For kids. Oh, so stop using that. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now for Harvard. What do you say? It's good for your what? You know, what kind of what kind of reason you you would you would think will get you um, going? Well, I guess it is but like it's like some of it it's also about like like passion, like you know, like like if they if they really like it. Like if they really like hate it, like just forget it. Yeah. Oh. So if you if, if you have kids who love it, like you know, uh, like uh, Linda was, uh, so just kind of go that route. Say, wow, so you you're passionate about it, but but then leave it like that. Don't don't no, push. But like if if they really like it, then you know you should like encourage them to like pursue it. Uh huh. But and then kind of leave it to them to to drive it. No. Like, but she, encourage, she, encourage it. But she liked it. She was over encouraged. She hated it now. <laughs> you know, where's the boundaries? Do you get a kid who hate it? We push them, and that's not, not the way to go. We have kids who love it, we push it, and then she hates it. So it's like, what what do you, in hindsight, what do you think would be right for us? Well, we parents need that. Mm. <laughs> well, I think that um, it really depends on um, how much you want your child's personality. Mm -hmm. If they are self-driven, um, and if you put too much pressure, it will only break them. Mm -hmm. But then if they are like very passive, and then you realize that you know, if you push a little bit, it, it increases a little bit, then that you should you know, continue pushing to a point that they can handle, not like you know, overboard. Mm -hmm. But it really depends on the personality, mm -hmm. because if they're really self-driven already, it will only break them with mm -hmm. more pressure. How much time? Uh, Jenny, how, how much time do we have? Two more minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's a good question. I think uh, unless you guys. Want um, like I said, I was very rebellious prior to that. Okay. Um, but later on, I'm actually I. How do I explain it? My personality, I'm not sure about other people, mm -hmm. is that um, it requires positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So if um, I get a little, oh, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I would. Uh, I would make sure that I meet this expectation mm -hmm. later on. If, like, so I, I compete with not other people, I compete with myself. Mm -hmm. so, so when you play piano, was it like that? No, because I was already doing better than before. My mom's like, well, you know, so-and-so is oh. doing better. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you know, oh that so-and-so is the thing that breaks a kid, breaks a kid. So don't say that, you know. No, sure. but like, uh, like I said, I compete with myself. So if I think I'm doing better than myself today, then mm -hmm. tomorrow I should do better and then do better. So here we had a case. You already had the passion. You were motivated, motivated enough to be better than yourself than yesterday. And what you didn't want the parents was that comparing with somebody else that really broke that motivation. So, well, okay, thank you. I know we're running out of time. You have something to add? No? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I only played piano for like three months, and then I actually didn't really mind it because I like my teacher, and she was a really nice person, and uh, I thought piano was cool, but the problem was every time I had free time, whether it was after dinner or, um, you know, even like right after I got from winter school, it was like you have to practice more. Oh, the parents kept telling me, no, you have free time, go have fun, because, practice. Yeah, no. like I would, I would find free time in my own practice, but... Um, even if it was the same amount of time, I just don't, I just didn't like it that they actually spent every single moment pushing me to do it. Mm -hmm. So what I heard is, number one, even if you are self-driven, you, you, you don't mind doing it, you had an interest uh, to do it, to practice, you don't want to be doing it every single moment mm -hmm. when your parents feel like you're wasting your time. You know? and number two, was it like you would, if, if really you were doing it every single moment, you want it to be from you, not being like told, you know, whoop, you know, whoop, you need to do it, right? Uh, so, so, so that, yeah, I heard you, I heard you. Yeah. Anything to add to do with this? Uh, well, Did you play piano? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I just stopped. Yeah. My little sister now, she's playing, and my mom is here practice two hours a day. How old is well, she? One, one hour. Okay. She, she's in, um, she's going into the third grade. 
She's going to the third grade. She practice one hour per day. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you kill your kids' interest in playing. My, my kids play five minutes a day. That's why they continue <laughs> playing until sixth grade now. Okay. Yeah, but, that's why you shouldn't make them practice. Okay. 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 That's, so that's what how you kill those kids' interest. Anything else to to add? Okay. Okay. Well, I hate to end here, but uh, wonderful, wonderful sharing. So. so Parents, don't, don't you agree? Yeah, it's wonderful. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Linda. And let us give the teenager and our moderator another round of applause. Colonel, thank you. We're going to award you the certificate of appreciation. I would like to invite the team.